I started HTML and CSS last week. How long before I can land a job? Uh, 69 days. After 69 days, you're going to become a professional HTML developer. Thanks, LOL. You're welcome. <coughs> well, excuse me. HTML is more complicated than C++. <laughs> So I'm thinking how programming HTML would actually look like. It's something like XSLT. By the way, can I use any HTML tags in HTML5? Basically, what I want to do, for loop from 0 to 10, print message var i, message i. We're going to have a code. So elements, we have code, we have for loops. Document, query, selector. So I can get the element by ID. How can I get all of the children of this thing? Okay, so this is the HTML collection. Can I iterate those children somehow? For let child in and then console log child. You know what I mean? I can, I can do that, but it also has zero. I think this is not the correct way of doing that. So maybe it has to be off. Yeah, it has to be off. So we have a code and we're going to do for off code eval node and I'm going to just provide the child. So for a single child, uh, how can I get the name of the tag? Tag name. All right. So in here we're going to have things like for and another one is going to be print, I think, default. And then in here we can throw something like unknown node. So we do not support this kind of tag name how can i get the attributes so somebody suggested like to do deer let's take a look at deer it's this is too much actually attributes ah i see so they have a variant from zero to one you can okay <laughs> that confused me a little bit but yeah that, that makes sense all right so if you do something like print you're going to be doing console log node attributes a message speaking of the for loop from value node attributes from and then we're going to have two javascript string to integer uh -huh, parse int uh, we need to do let from value less than less or equal to value plus plus i we're going to be taking the node children for for child of node children and we're calling eval node recursively and then i go here and here is my code in html guys we are programming in html let's see if it's gonna work or not let me see i'm gonna go to the console and i'm gonna refresh and nothing happened <laughs> i wonder why oh i never actually included that script okay so let's quickly do that index.js so is it src and uh and it doesn't even complain about anything. Uh, we can try to trace it. Console log. Okay, it found four, but it didn't do anything in here. From from value and to to value. There we go. Uh huh. Is it gonna give me? <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> They're nuns. Cool. So I probably have to do something like value in here. Okay. And uh, it did the thing. Uh, for each is not a form. Okay, okay. That, that explains it now. For let for child eval node. Something like this. And look at that, mate. In that. But that's not enough. We also have to do something like value. There we go. Uh, so I want to remove this tracing. We don't need this tracing anymore. And now it printed hello world 10 times. And this program is written in HTML. We can actually print it 100 times if you want to. So we print it 100 times. But to be fair, I want to have like I. All right, so here's the next question. How can we implement something like this? Make it a variable. Uh, we can try to evaluate it, right? How can we make i available in the scope? We can have a variable name in here. Var name is going to be something like node attributes var value. When I evaluate that node, I want for that evaluation to have this variable available in the scope. 
you can use this as context passing. Yeah, this is what I was thinking about, but I'm not really proficient with this. Eval not bind or something. Hmm. So let's actually research JavaScript bind. Function prototype bind. Thank you, thank you so much for, for the suggestion. Uh, create a new function that when called has this keyword set to be provided value. We need to conduct an experiment chat. I want to have a function that does console log x. And then I want to try to call this function. Will this work? And it didn't work. Let's, let's find out why. X is not defined, so that means I'm forced to do this, right? Well, and now it works, but I wonder, can you import everything from this into the current scope? There's a with statement, which is not recommended. With. Just like in Pascal, by the way, Pascal also has that, but it's all the JS. Why did they get rid of that? This is such a useful feature, because it was confusing. All right, so we can do the following thing. I have a workaround, basically. Uh, <laughs> another interesting thing. So originally nice is not going to contain anything. Is it possible for me to do something like x equal 420? Will that work? It will. Perfect. So that means now I can quite easily create the context and put all the variables there and then just use them. Okay, this is actually perfect. We're going to have context, which is initially this, var name equal i. Then we bind context and then we call a for child on that. And then within that thing, we call eval. I want to check out uh, JavaScript eval. So eval. Yeah, yeah, so you, you're going to be forced to actually use this, but maybe that's all right. Would you look at that? Isn't that amazing? Uh, we can do some other things. For example, if condition this i mod zero, now we're only printing even numbers. Case if const condition is going to be node attributes condition value and if eval condition we're going to take the body for let if child of node children eval we don't really have to bind anything i can just do if child and just evaluate the whole child oh and it's undefined it's completely undefined that's really strange did they make a typo anywhere ah yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it needs to be because it cannot actually find. Yeah, we need to propagate that context. So it's going to be this. You're right. You're right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And let's take a look. There we go. And now they're only even. Well, we could implement something more interesting. Okay. So one of the things to make it less cheaty is to actually implement our own parser that parses the strings within this HTML. Or we could probably go even more hardcore. And for these kind of attributes, we could make like literally conditions. Condition, we could like make ASTs. So you could have mod, then you have a variable uh, with a name i. And we don't even need this in this case, because we know that variable are in the current context, right? So that means we'll have to prefix this ourselves. So this is a mod between variable and literal value 2 and then equals literal value 0. This way you sort of have to write the AST completely yourself. It's a little bit tedious but you can do that and then we're going to traverse this AST and interpret it. Yeah, we can implement that a little bit later. So I'm going to put it as a to-do. So we're going to acknowledge that. Here's the possible solution. I want you to do fizz buzz. To do fizz buzz, we need actually to have else conditions. How can we implement an else condition? Something like else, but it's not a valid HTML at all. So maybe we could have something like then, and you would close it like that, and then you would have else. Because how do you implement a fizz buzz? If i is divisible by 15, it's divisible by 3 and 5 simultaneously. To print fizz buzz, else. You know what? Right now, what I'm gonna do, message not fizz buzz, but rather this i switch case. That's a good idea, actually. So it's gonna be something like switch. And then you could you would have case with the condition this i15 case print message. Okay, then we're gonna have another case. 
divisible by three case print message fees. I'm gonna copy paste this entire thing. And divisible by five is gonna be buzz. All right, and we're gonna remove that. I'm not gonna remove the code that actually interprets all of that, but yeah, we're gonna keep it like this. Let's go back to the interpreter. We're gonna introduce switch. I need to start iterating through all of the children's right away. So, and there is one pretty important condition here. Tag name of the child has to be case. So we're gonna only allow cases within switch. If tag name not equal case, it's gonna be something like throw. Oh yeah, we also have to have default. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Oh, let's, let's actually put it like this. Default. It's gonna be print message this i. That's cool. So that means we can do a switch case in here. Switch child tag name case case. <laughs> well, that looks silly. Uh, all right. So it's going to break default. And I think after default, we have to actually. Oh yeah, we won't be able to easily break out of this thing. But so we need to have a case condition. It's going to be case condition switch child attributes condition value so this is a case condition if eval case condition true we actually need to break out of the entire thing here if we find something here so we need to do let case child of hmm, switch child children <laughs> Oh, oh my god, okay, so uh, eval node bind this case chat. <laughs> Alright, after that, we have to actually return from this entire eval node. Uh, switch summer chat. <laughs> yes. Default is gonna be the same, except here, you don't have to check any conditions, you just uh, do that right away. Case child is gonna be default child. I guess that's it. That should be it. And if you have something else in here, right? So it's going to be default. I'm going to throw unsupported tag switch child tag name inside of switch construct. All right, all right, all right. Let's see if I didn't f it up too much. I think I f***ed it up a little bit. Um, it's actually the other way around or something. But yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Equals zero, equals zero. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Invalid and expected token. Ah, I see. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Is that a fizz buzz? This is a mother flipping fizz buzz. I did it. I implemented fizz buzz in a fing HTML. How about that? And it works. It, it's actually working fizz buzz in a fing HTML. <laughs> <laughs> ah! So yeah, we literally write code in tags and then using the JavaScript, we just interpret them as like a scripting language or something. <laughs> so dumb. You know what? We can always change. Yeah, we can reinterpret print message in a different way. So essentially what we can do here, we can put a log in here, right? And when you try to print that, instead of doing that, we could append a new thing into the log. But let's try inner HTML. There we go, now we're talking. So you see, print, we reinterpret print, and now it just appends those things in there. This is generated by Shimo code, interpreted by Chowski. Look at the source code of this page. <laughs> ah, I want to learn HTML, what should I focus? You should focus on learning such concepts as for loops and switch cases. Because with this concept in HTML, you would be able to write a fees bus. And once you know how to write a fees bus, you will crack any coding interview, even the Google's one. If you show that to a Google interviewer, you're instantly hired. Seriously. So this is what you should focus on. Yes, it is in the standard. This is basically early React. Haha. <laughs> Public fizz uh, buzz HTML. Mm -hmm. So it, it's deploying. It's it's deploying right now. So soon it's going to be available for everyone. And by the way, it's already available on the GitHub. If anyone is interested on how to program an HTML, uh, you can check it out here. Is that an interesting concept? I don't know. Was it interesting to watch how to implement this? Concept? I'm not a web developer, so I don't know. Shit. 
about this kind of stuff. You tell me if I did good. Thanks everyone who's watching right now. Really appreciate it. Have a good one and I see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow, according to the schedule, we're going to continue to develop our own programming language. So yeah, that's it for the day. Love you. Mm.